Hi all. Okay, so if you want to invest in uh, something that can help you if you are in soldering or repairing, so we have this one from Miniware. This is a hot plate preheater soldering, and Miniware is known for the soldering sinks, which are high quality and very good. I use it a lot. And also uh, this gadget, it's not a gadget, it's more professional, I would say. Let's see how it looks. Okay, manual, never read it. And then you have the device itself. Yeah, you have your power connection, also type C. And you have some protection plastic on the top and USB type C to type C cable. I already have one, so I don't need this one. Now let's remove this cover and then we have the plate. By the way, they have uh, two types of plate. Uh, one is with, uh, they call it a better finish, but I decided to take this one because the other one I think is brass and the temperature, uh, let's say, delivery from the heat sink to, or for the heater, better than their brass. Okay, so let's try to see how it works. By the way, you can use any type of this high power charger to to make it to work as a power supply okay power is in okay this is you don't see it so I will put it into the camera so we have the heat now maybe let's do a zoom okay so it looks like this and uh, let's try to see how to get work with it so if you press here you go between uh, heat reflow info and menu the reflow is like a process you start in from temperature A and then going to B and then see where it is heated, the solder is melt and then it is cooling down. In each menu you can press long press and then you see T1, T2, T3 and then hot over trim, I don't know. If you leave it more than two seconds it's jump to the uh, to the menu. And then let's try the reflow. Okay, so if we will go maybe from the menu, we can see we can move between yeah between the temperature. Now it is okay. Just a second. Let me understand myself how it works. Okay, so we have. T1 and if I probably if I press here yeah I can change the T1 which is now 220 Celsius and then let's go uh, T2 is 250 and T3 is 300 is the melting point so of course you can set it by the way you see there is a green light here and if the green become red so it's very hot and you don't want to touch it and this will be good not to boss like this that have component on both sides because it will melt both sides and you will have something that will not work but it's for board like this where you have all the component on one side and the other side is empty so you can put it and then reheat so let's now try to go over the process it take of course, there is 
uh, seconds to each temperature, which you can also change and set. And I believe that the setting that they already pre uh, made is good to, to work with it. So we'll now check it. So we'll go now to the reflow because the reflow is different steps of temperature. Of course, you can use only the heat and the heat is also, but it will get to specific temperature and stay there. The reflow, let's say, is more uh, for uh, the way that uh, these things are soldered. So maybe try the reflow. So I'm pressing long press and now we can see that the temperature is rising up 24 and I think it's 80 seconds to each uh, stage here. Now you can see of course that I cannot remove the component because the solder but when it will be uh, heated so I will be able for example to take this chip out maybe we'll try to do it of course it's I don't need I think this board is ruined of course you need to put because the board is bigger than the plate here so it will work on the uh, component above the plate maybe all the board will be heat enough in order to remove also the other but we will test it <coughs> I will uh, move the this uh, video faster so you will be able to see it just when it is uh, and and also you can see a nice graph here how the temperature is rising now we get to uh, almost 100 degrees Okay, I think it is thin, so the melting point is about uh, the temperature we can see now. So let's try to remove the component. Let's see, very simple. Now uh, basically, all the components can be removed easily without any issue. Let's see, example, the capacitor. It's, it's now cooling down. So I see it was not uh, till uh, 300. Let's try to understand why. So maybe we can yeah, go out and look on the menu again. So T1, T2, T3. Okay, so I changed the reflow. It is not giving me to work because it is starting from low temperature and the plate is still hot so I need 
it to be fully cooled before I can continue or I can go to the heat and then on the heat menu to set uh, 260 but we wait till it cool and then start again the reflow process okay started again the reflow because I put the maximum temperature that it gave me 260 uh, I think it should get to 300 I will check in the spec but maybe not in the reflow process Okay, it soon should be the melting point and then we will try to remove this cap off maybe also the small chip okay we are near 230 soon let's try You see, very easy to take the cap off, it's in the melting point, also these chips probably, yeah, you can see, can remove all the components very easily. Okay. It's not yet the 260, so I have a lot of time to work. Just removing some caps. We have this small chip here. so very nice probably now this board will work because i fixed it <laughs> sometimes just remove the components of course i'm joking and as you can see it is working pretty nice so i can really recommend on this hotting plate uh, it will be good for fixing like cell phones or or pcb or doing a soldering uh, from the start if you have something that you would like to solder so very nice and very recommend now by the way it's now in the 260 and it will stay for 80 seconds because it's programmed like this and then temperature will go down of course at this stage you should not move the board if you did the soldering because you will ruin everything you should let it here and keep it this way till it will eventually go down below 100 let's say 90 or 80 degrees and then you are good to remove the board out so hope you enjoy thank you and bye